Good morning, folks. You may have seen this animation before from NASA's discovery of Whistler waves. Well, it's being used again now in a great article about our electrical solar system. Let's do the RSOE, a hailstorm again in the U.S. It's an everyday thing now. Five pointer hit Iran yesterday, and while quake swarms are normal in Europe, anything over 4.0 is noteworthy, and we had a couple yesterday. The most notable quake was a 5.2 in Honduras. The Caribbean plate is always a worry these days. Sad but informative article on ovarian cancer caused by industrial chemicals. Big shocker here, Earth's magnetic field activates receptors in pigeons. Their navigation is becoming even better understood. Apparently humans were way smarter than we thought, way, way earlier than we thought. Speed in glaciers actually spells lower sea levels than many scientists had originally feared, and I thought I'd double up on the animations today, this one about La Nina and the sea level anomaly in response. Looking at the northern Earth-facing solar disk, there's nothing geo-effective as of yet, but you can see the large, dark coronal hole turning this way. You may remember she was here in mid-March as a giant triangle. You might remember the magnetosphere reversal fiasco. It was here in early April, slightly disfigured, but with a front row seat for two eight-magnitude quakes rocking Sumatra in the span of an hour. And she's here turning again now. I was actually getting worried watching the bar toll reading intensify, but that does appear to have abated. The southern solar disk is a bit more interesting. You see the dark south pole coronal hole turning away from us. This hemisphere houses the primary active regions on the sun right now. NOAA has no spots labeled worse than beta, but there is reason to pay attention. Watch the activity around the big spot. Over the last 48 hours, the spots below and to the sides fell apart and disappeared, favoring a new region of spots just above and slightly to the right. Looking at her facelift in visible light and magnetic false color, what makes me worry is this growing red region spreading from its blue counterpart over there on the right, but as she does so, moving toward this bigger region. That has instability written all over it. And when the sun goes down tonight, get out and see Venus. You're running out of time to see her before the transit. If you can get out and see Saturn tonight, you're one lucky cat. The moon should be bright enough to block her visibility. And tomorrow night, the moon is full and closest she will be to Earth all year long. At that same time, Mercury will oppose Saturn geocentrically, and Jupiter is just creeping in for a solar conjunction. That's the news, folks. Eyes open. Be safe.